Welcome back to Logic 101, I'm William Spaniel, and this lecture is on the rule of inference known as modus tollens. Modus tollens is a Latin phrase short for modus tollendo tollens, which translates roughly to the way that denies by denying. That, of course, is a mouthful, so you can see why logicians prefer calling this modus tollens instead. In any case, it works like this. You need two premises, B implies Q, and not Q, the negation of the consequent where, as always, P and Q could be simple sentences or compound sentences, it doesn't matter. In any case, if you have these two premises, you can conclude not P as well. So P implies Q, not Q, therefore not P. And we can see how this works using the examples that we talked about last time with modus ponens. So for example, suppose you have the two premises, if I am Miley Cyrus, I am crazy. And instead of having the affirmation of the antecedent, we have the negation of the consequent. So for the second premise, we have, I am not crazy. Well, if I'm Miley Cyrus, then I'm crazy. If I'm not crazy, then I can't possibly be Miley Cyrus. So those two premises through modus tollens allow us to conclude that I am not Miley Cyrus if I am not crazy. Similarly, if we have, if Lucy holds the football, Charlie Brown will miss. And if we know that Charlie Brown will not miss, then we can conclude that Lucy does not hold the football. Because if Lucy were to hold the football, that second premise can't be true. If Lucy holds the football, Charlie Brown misses. But in this case, Charlie Brown will not miss. So it can't be the case that Lucy is holding the football. And finally, if I am in California, I am in America. And I am not in America. Well, if I'm not in America, then I can't possibly be in California because being in California requires me to be in America. So as a result, we can conclude that I am not in California based off of those two premises and using modus tollens. And to prove this, we can look at just a picture. So this is the same picture as last time and also the picture that we looked at in contraposition, except I've moved that dot outside of the P and the Q sets. So you can think of this again as P being California and Q being the United States. If I'm outside of the United States and California is contained entirely within the United States, then by virtue of the fact that I'm not in the United States, I can't be in California. We can also prove this using a truth table, just like we did last time. So here I've filled out the entire truth table. We have the two simple sentences P and Q, and we're actually going to be focusing on the last three columns, which are not P, not Q, and P implies Q. So our two premises were P implies Q and not Q. So starting with not Q, let's highlight the two places, the two rows where not Q is true. That's in the second row and the fourth row. And then our other premise is P implies Q. That's true in three rows, the first row and the last two rows. And if you notice that if not Q and P implies Q are both true, that can only happen under one circumstance, which is in the bottom row. So we must be in the last row if we have not Q and P implies Q, but that means we can back out the fact then that not P is true. And that is exactly what Modus Tollens says. Modus Tollens says if you have an implication and you have the negation of the consequent, you can conclude the negation of the antecedent. That's exactly what we see here. And lastly, we can also prove modus tollens using modus ponens. So this is a preview of the proofs that we're going to be looking at in the next unit. I don't want that to be jarring to you when we get to proofs, so I want to do some light introductions. And this is going to provide a nice opportunity to do that using modus ponens to prove modus tollens. So remember that we have two premises that allow us to use modus tollens, which are P implies Q and not Q. And we can actually use modus ponens here if we take the first premise, P implies Q, and we use contraposition. So the contrapositive of P implies Q is not Q implies not P. So we just take line one and we apply the contrapos contraposition to it, and we get not Q implies not P. That's a valid rule of replacement. And then now, if you notice line two and line three, that's what allows us to use modus ponens. Modus ponens says that if we know that the antecedent is true, then we can conclude the consequent is true. So here the antecedent is line two, that's not Q, and that is the antecedent of the implication in line three. So if we take lines two and three and we apply modus ponens, then we get that the consequent is true, which is not P. And remember, that is exactly what modus tollens said. 
Modus Tollens said that if you have lines one and two being true, that's P implies Q and not Q, that you get the negation of the antecedent, not P. And that is what we see here. So many different ways of proving modus tollens. We've done it three ways here. And we have also seen a neat way of introducing proofs, which is, again, what we're going to be getting to in the next unit. So I hope you enjoyed this lecture on modus tollens. And I will see you next time when we look at more rules of inference. Take care.